Good morning, good evening, good night. Whenever you guys are watching this channel, first subscribe. I made a video last week uh, about Byron Donalds. This young man, uh, I've been watching him here this last week, and he's a person we should keep our eyes on. We need more people like this to run for political office, more people like Rand Paul and Ron DeSantis. But this young man right here, he's going straight to the point, and he's not beating around the bush. He's telling them like it is. And I'm going to let you listen to some of this. He's talking about the bill back better. He's talking about the border. He's talking about how the IRS is getting into our uh, bank accounts and looking at different things. But uh, check this out, uh, his speech. And uh, we'll watch this together. You guys tell me what you think. You think he should stay in the uh, political office? Or should he run for a higher office or, or what? But here you go. Let's watch some of this together. Congressman from Florida's 19th district, a uh, new freshman, certainly not uh, shy about getting out there and getting his uh, feet wet and getting after here. So we really appreciate that. And uh, my colleague, Byron Donalds. Uh, first of all, uh, thank you, Mr. Hearn. Thank you for the opportunity. Madam Speaker, um, it's important that we're here this evening because the president of the United States and the majority party has never actually talked about what's in this bill. They like to throw out, you know, their catchphrase, build back better. They like to talk about how they're going to be helping the children and, and helping our economy transform. But what they never talk about is what they're actually going to do. What the American people don't know, Madam Speaker, is that in this bill is a $1.3 billion provision to give newspapers $12,500 per employee for local newspapers all across the United States. I don't know about you, but I don't know how that helps anybody build back better when we're giving tax dollars to newspapers. Exactly. In this bill, it gives $42 billion in tax credits to the rich to buy electric cars. The reason why they're tax credits for the rich is because working families, middle class families, don't have the disposable income to buy electrical cars. Only the wealthy buy them, but that's in this bill. The administration wants to give the IRS access to your checking accounts. This is outrageous. This completely eliminates due process. It makes every American guilty until proven innocent. And the White House wants this provision in the bill because they can't tax the American people enough to pay for all their radical spending. So they have to go find every piece of change in the couch cushions. You know, the only time in American history we unleashed the IRS on checking accounts and on bank accounts was when we allowed for currency transaction reports to track drug cartels and, and businesses breaking the law from laundering money in the United States because of drugs and terrorism. That is when we unleashed a currency transaction reports on transactions in the United States. It's never been done in any other time, but Joe Biden wants to do it to every American. And make no mistakes, America, it is to every American. In this bill, it raises taxes radically in our corporate sector, makes us the highest tax it's the highest corporate tax income country in the world, higher than China. You know China, the country that is our economic rival. And it raises those taxes. It makes us less competitive. But that's supposed to help us build back better. And let's talk about spending. Because in this very bill, one of the key proponents that Joe Biden and the Democrats want is to expand and continue the child tax credit, which pays $300 per child. But what they'll never tell you is there is no provision in the bill to actually track baseball upon social security numbers to make sure that even wow. if you're going to give a benefit, which, by the way, we should not give, that anybody in the United States can get it. And I stress anybody in the United States, because by the end of this year, there'll be easily 2.3 to 2.5 million people who have crossed our borders illegally. Mm -hmm. This bill is a catastrophe. This bill spends far more money than we possibly have. It will create more, and I stress, more inflation in our society, which is already crippling poor people. It is already crippling working families. It is not going to help our country. You know, back in February, when we told the administration do not extend federal unemployment benefits because it was going to pay people to stay home, Joe Biden said, no, it won't. Everything's going to be A-OK. -okay. Well, look at our economy today. Everything is not OK. Everything is screwed. And if we listen to Joe Biden, somebody who, frankly, who's never been right, somebody who's never had a job one day in his life about what it's going to take to actually allow our economy to thrive and prosper, our country is going to see its last great days. Wow. Madam Speaker, 
The reason why you guys can't get the votes is because even Democrats in your own party realize how destructive this will be to the small business owners in their districts, how destructive this will be to the economic vitality of the people in their districts. You can't get the votes. It's time to stand down. This bill is a disaster, and I yield back. Let's watch some more. Uh, thank you, Diana. Look, let's just get right to it, everybody. It's going to cost the average American about $500 more a month to just live. How does that help middle-income families in our country? How does it help poor families in our country? How does it help seniors on fixed income in our country? It does not. You know, when Joe Biden, when he first came in and he said he had a plan to save America, his American rescue plan, House Republicans told him that was going to be a disaster for America. We said it was going to lead to inflation. It did. We said it was going to create a labor shortage. It did. And so now, right now, in the Budget Committee, House Democrats are having a hearing to talk about all of the importance of the American Rescue Plan. Folks, we know the truth. If your plan worked, you don't have to hold congressional hearings to prove it. The proof is in the pudding. Every American would know it. If you're filling up a Suburban anywhere in the United States, it's going to cost you about $125 to $145 to fill it up. That's fact. That $145 to fill up your Suburban, just to pick up your kids from practice and go back and forth to work, that's money you don't have to put food on the table. But guess what? The food to put on the table costs more, too. So that takes away from you being able to have fun this summer like Diana was just talking about. You can't take that vacation. You can't go buy that new article of clothing. You can't go do the next thing that you choose to do. This inflation is the largest tax increase on poor families and middle income families in decades in the United States. All brought to us by Joe Biden. Frankly, a president who has no idea how an economy actually works. This White House likes to talk about building an economy for the middle class. That's literally what they were saying yesterday. The president's probably going to say it in about an hour in Philadelphia. Well, guess what, folks? An economy for the middle class doesn't work if the economy doesn't work. The late, great Margaret Thatcher said it better than any of us ever could. Joe Biden and the Democrats will prefer the poor be poorer so the rich are less rich. Mr. Speaker, all levels of income are better off than they were in 1979. But what the honorable member is saying is that he would rather the poor were poorer, provided the rich were less rich. That way you will never create the wealth for better social services as we have. And what a policy. Yes, he would rather have the poor poorer, provided the rich were less rich. That is a liberal policy. Yes, it came out. He didn't intend it to, but he did. Joe Biden would prefer to build an economy that doesn't work for anybody as opposed to letting the free market and yes, trickle down economics, which does work, actually flourish in the United States. Joe Biden and House Democrats will prefer we talk more about Uvalde, the tragedy that we all care about. They will care more about talking about, we're talking about dog collars and oversight later today or tomorrow. They would prefer to talk about January 6th than actually do the job here in Congress and actually work on supply chains, work on energy, work on inflation, and do our job for the American people. And last thing I'll say is this. For the people amongst the House Democrats and among the administration who say, oh, just go buy an electric car, it's better. Your electric car costs about fifty-five dollars to $60,000 on average. Most Americans can't afford that. But then if you added one million more electric cars to the electric grid, there's not enough energy on the electric grid to actually power the electric cars you actually want to get in the United States. Oh, and by the way, when Joe Biden unleashed the Domestic Production Act, the Defense Production Act last week for solar panels, where do we get those solar panels from? We don't mine that stuff in the United from States, China. folks. That comes from China. So this administration would rather us take our resources which are buying less products in the United States for our families and ship those resources off to China to help the Chinese grow their economies while Americans suffer here at home. I'm not concerned about a recession. And, I mean, you're always concerned about uh, a recession, but the GDP, you know, 
fell to 1.4 percent. The authority is given to the CDC to make a decision about when the conditions uh, are, uh, exist to lift Title 42, and that's why we're pre preparing to lift it. We had proposed to eliminate that policy uh, by the end of May. The, the court has said we can't so far, and what the court says we're going to do, the court could come along and say we cannot do that, and that's it. Flip-flopping about Title 42 at the border. <laughs> Saki says it's it's going away. Wow. Biden says no. A court says it has to say. You see what I mean? This just feels very unserious when we need leadership at a time when the economy, we could be going through a recession. Listen, America, we have the Keystone cops, unfortunately, running our country. They don't know what they're doing. They can't even get their story straight. Joe Biden has already witnessed a decrease in our economy by 1.4%. But he says he's not concerned about inflation. The man can't even get the words out about what's going on with Title 42 and the Supreme Court. And the courts right now, we have to get serious in our country. It's time for Republicans to take control of the country in the House and the Senate so we can at least get the ship back on track. Oh, wow. All right, guys. Thanks for watching and subscribe to my channel. Uh, I'm going to find some more videos and stuff uh, with Byron. Uh, Donalds, uh, if you guys have some, send me some links, send it to either my email address or leave a comment below. But again, thanks for watching and subscribe to my channel and have a great day.